So, all right. Well, I will uh, officially uh, kick things off. So, hello, welcome to uh, this is episode thirteen of the Microsoft Community Office Hours, and uh, oh, burning a candle, keeping Not, the light going, my friend. All right. This is the latest version of uh, the candles that I make. My daughter and I went to uh, Candle Lab over the weekend and made our own candles again. So oh, I keep, I keep making a, a version of this one I call dirty hippie. <laughs> it has incense and patchouli and another ingredient. This one is bookworm hip, uh, book. Yeah. Bookworm hippie. So, yeah. Patchouli incense and old books is the smell. So, so, so you know how you take a, a, a kids to a, a restaurant that has the you know the fifty flavors of soda. Inevitably, uh, you know the age about eight years old, nine years old, they're fascinated with the idea of let's get a little of every single flavor in this. The suicide, yeah. Yeah, the su- making the suicide. Yeah, is there a version of that at the in the candle shop? <laughs> that is a very good question. Um, no, I don't think. I mean, they've got boatloads of different uh, the entire wall is um would that not be potpourri <laughs> they do have potpourri but that's kind of anti-potpourri i mean potpourri is supposed to have like scents that kind of go together and smell good <laughs> after all and i guess the because the th- thing that i liken it to sean is when i was a teenager so i think i was 15 and my best friend stan and i we were down at the sunrise mall in sacramento and uh, we decided to get into a perfume fight in the Sears. <laughs> oh, no. Jeez. And I tell you, that, yes. and I was squirt, wearing a jacket. Squirt, squirt. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, jeez. Uh, um, the, uh, yeah, the, that jacket, I, mean, I couldn't wear it for months. And I just let it all weather, all seasons, just lay, sit outside and just air out. Yeah, and, park that in a wind tunnel test tube sort of thing and oh geez but i kind of imagine the same thing at the candle shop it is like it, every every scent they was, don't let you go solo. that nuts huh. but the uh what's, yeah, the fun the, in that, then? what's that i said what's the fun in that then <laughs> well i i suppose huh. I, if you do eventually bring the candle home to burn so you know there oh. is okay that yeah and I would love to say it's just, you know, it's it's very cheap to go and do, but it is a non-insignificant amount of money, so. Yeah. Well, hey, gentlemen, I know that, uh, you know, I apologize for the, uh, uh, for nip it in the bud this morning session and and a uh, couple folks that uh, had planned to be there and weren't able to, or you were a little upset that they got. So Eric Riz claims that he was going to be joining us this morning. Um but since you know we're here, we are on the Office 365 community, the Microsoft Teams community. You know, posting all of our questions that are drawing from that, and it's run by the Cloud 365 team who are running all this week the glo- the, the Global Con 2 event, and uh, and so we were live streaming. It overlapped. We went that entire hour. I don't know if anybody didn't didn't catch that. I poked my uh, head in briefly. Is it going well? Uh, I think it's going really well. I, I don't know what the the numbers were. It's, it's close to twenty thousand registrations. That's fantastic. So I don't know what the numbers look like today, but uh, yeah, we had. I, I know at the beginning, so we had the keynote. We were on thirty minutes before the keynote, and there's three of us, Martin, Ben, and I, that were. Uh, we had taken the keynote recording, chopped it up into pieces, and highlighted six or seven portions of that demos and then talked about them and it kind of overlapped the following session uh which was uh naomi moneypenny and uh, chris mcnulty talking about project cortex which of course was at the end of the teeper uh uh you know keynote as well and so we kind of talked over both of those and overlapped our entire hour so i was thinking that you know hey i'm gonna have to jump off early and and go go and do this and i'm just thinking you know we were kind of doing amas it was a live stream it oh, was yeah. on the same site so we just kind of left it you know but good deal yeah i was i was it was a lot of fun doing that of course but uh, i was kind of bummed because i've been enjoying doing these as well yeah i can say that i have too 
I'll speak for Hal as well because I'm his personal spokesperson, and I know he's been loving them. <laughs> well, guys, this, a burger. So, uh, Sean, you have any questions lined up? Anything that thoughts from the past week? Any questions that you've come across? I am fresh off a nap on the couch. Okay. And so, <laughs> yeah, I'm about as prepared as you can be. <laughs> well, I know that there's some questions that are out there, and uh, I don't know that I'm I can answer a couple of these and. I'm not sure if you're up on your Outlook in Exchange capabilities, but this is a it's a great question. Um, Sherilyn asked the question. This is the the top there on the Office 365 community right now. It says I have full access to a colleague's calendar. All right. So you've okay. they you've given them, and I'm I'm assuming it's not just viewable access to a calendar, but of, sure. of, of public things, but to have you know calendar control. However, my view of their calendar doesn't show all of the meetings. I literally only see like 25% of the meetings, even though they selected for me to have access to do everything. Why is that? What do I need to check? Is it a single? Okay, first question is, is the calendar a single calendar or does the person have a composite view? Because I know I have like full, four overlapping calendars on right. my schedule. Um, that would be my first question. And then assuming that they do have access to that. Um... Yeah, that's a good question of whether whether other, you know, views of calendars, you know, that, that aggregated view, do the views show up or do they not show up? The, my other thought was kind of alongside that. Maybe Neil can answer. Welcome, Neil. Hey, that was, I, 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 give me a moment. <laughs> Ambush. Yeah, you actually looks like you're caught in the light there. But. <laughs> yeah, l literally was. I just making a beverage. Okay. But Sean, my other thought, the other half of this is that still, if I, if I go in, I give you access to my calendar. So Neil, this is somebody who's has full access to a peer's calendar, but is only seeing about 25% of the uh, events that are on the person's calendar and they've got they're supposed to do be able to do everything for that person my first thought was that well it sean if i give you access to everything on my calendar but if i have a bunch of calendar items that i've put in as like a, a personal view where i've made them private my assumption is that you would then not be able to see those with your access only me with my login would be able to see those yeah you would see it as a as a I guess the default outlook for you will be a blue a blue block. Uh, it would be a block. So show is busy, but yeah. you would be able to see the item. Which is what the I'm assuming she's talking about, not being able to see 75% well, yeah. and maybe to see the blocked out. Yeah, but also consider this, there's another scenario. Like if I think about my calendar, most of the things on my calendar are not created by me. They're created by somebody else who invites me. And you, you, if just because they're on my calendar doesn't mean that you have the rights to see those things. They should show as like busy or, you know, not free. Yeah. But they won't. You won't necessarily be able to see what those actual items are, because I haven't invited you. Right. I've invited right. Sean, and now you're looking, so Sean can see it, but you can't. And, that, and yeah. if you think about it, that's that's the way I would expect it to behave. Yeah, so I don't I don't know I don't know if that's a scenario, the specific scenario, but but I would expect that to be a, a specific potential issue for this yeah. person. So that yeah, so the real question is when they don't sh when she's saying they don't show up, what do, what does she actually mean? Do they not show up at all? Does they do Does they show free? up? But, or, Busy, tentative. What what what, what right. are you talking about? Because yeah. I feel I think you came in before I mentioned I raised the potential issue that I have with my wife, which is I my view my calendar view is an aggregate of four separate calendars overlaid on top of each other. Mm. Yeah, I know. That so if painful. I give some, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the life of an independent consultant. But if you um, if you were, if I were to share my calendar, which is either, you know, one of my personal calendars or my LLC's calendar, mm -hmm. my wife would see those events, but she wouldn't see any of the other events on the other calendars, even though they're in my view, that aggregate view of the four overlaid calendars. 
Yeah, see, I don't I don't overlay calendars at all. I have my calendar. Amy, my significant other, has her calendar. And we have another calendar that sits within the Azure Fast Track team that's where we invite people to do like shadowing and sharing for new people. Yeah. But they're completely separate. And we keep it that way for, I'd say for a good reason, because it's very manageable that way. Um, I, I don't like the idea of merging calendars together. It, it drives me crazy. Yeah, it, it does get a little busy, but it has, I found it does work for me and it seems to yeah, get me 90% of the way. Right, and it's what works best for you, right? It's all about yeah. what works best for the people that are sharing that calendar. And if it works, it works. But I suspect, though, based on what you just said, and I'm, I know I was late to the conversation, but I think it might well be that somebody has set up a meeting and they've invited, you know, person A creates the meeting, person B is invited to the meeting, person B is now concerned that person C can't see. Well, that's probably because person C wasn't invited. So they can see a block, but they can't necessarily see what the detail is. You know, and I, don't, and I don't know, but that's where I'm. That makes sense I, to me. And honestly, I think I could see all three of these scenarios mm -hmm. causing what they're experiencing. Because because I know that it, it, if I have a uh, something that I mark as private, and you have access, that that's that's the one that I've I've tested. I've seen it in practice. You will not be able to go in and see. It's private even from my my yeah, I believe even from my admin who has that full. Yes. If, if, even if you share your calendar, if you mark something as private, it is absolutely 100% private. Right. It shows as busy or whatever you mark it as, generally busy, but no one can, no one, even your admin who you have shared your calendar with. So Amy and I, we obviously both work at Microsoft and we both, we share calendars a lot. We do a lot of stuff that's like, okay, when can we go for lunch? When can you go and take a walk this afternoon? That kind of thing. And we share our calendars, but she can't see anything iMac as private other than just shows us a block that says appointment or meeting, whatever it might be. So you're absolutely right. That's exactly how it how that operates. So I suspect we're along those lines here. Yep. Agreed. And Hal, we expected you right. to be eating a burger right now. What are you what are you doing? Well, I got a meeting to take care of first. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's dedication, right? That's dedication. That's right. Well, he just did. Sacrifice. He's a professional. Personal sacrifice. That's right. <laughs> got to do what you got to do. Uh, uh, let's see. So somebody asked a question. I mean, this is a good, uh, it's been answered for everybody, but, uh, you know, is there any site where I can see new updates of Office 365 products and services? And, you know, <laughs> first, first, uh, uh, you know, response uh from uh well andy says you know in the admin center like see what's happening with your tenant but uh actually uh brad shannon says uh okay. here's the link to the microsoft roadmap, roadmap yeah the roadmap yeah. site would be where to go roadmap.office.com uh, yeah i, I see so this is a question it's it's one of the most common that you know we've we've answered this numerous times it's, it's like the same question of you know where do MVPs where do where do we keep, kind of keep up? How do we keep keep up with everything going on? And the roadmap site. Um, I, so I follow along all the updates that happen. I get in my feed um, any of the Microsoft 365 blog updates, and then there are different individuals that have podcasts and do regular updates. Uh, I'm a fan of the the regarding 365 crew. Um, a lot of great content that comes through that. Um, Sean, are you a part of that? No. Yeah. I'm I'm part not of the to my knowledge. <laughs> yeah. I'm part of the loosely tied in the the ecosystem just outside of the core. The affiliates. Yeah, the affiliates. That's right. Occasionally something I write will show up in there. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of great podcasts and stuff that you can go and follow along. But uh, yeah, the the regarding 365, if you're not following that podcast, the vlog. Um, it's it's pretty fantastic, and uh, despite they occasionally uh, consort with Alistair P Pugin, so uh oh, but despite that, that, oh, don't that casts some <laughs> that casts certain shade across the, the whole effort. Uh, Alistair is a very entertaining individual, Indeed and uh, he is. Yeah, overall, <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, no, no, no it's a, you're seeing this. He's a ruffian. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he's got two back for you, Neil. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, sorry. I know I should have done that because we've been recorded, so I apologize. But this is a family no, channel. He, we, we, we are very, um, we're well connected. We're good. Yeah, no, everybody I has so. that, knows Alistair well, has that kind of relationship with Alistair. So, so some, some pretty. Funny, funny stories and stuff yeah. with him. And you, might, you, might, you might want to clip that bit out though before you post the recording, <laughs> Christian. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> no, I, uh, I, lo- I love, I love that guy to death. He's awesome. It's all good. He he knows. He he wouldn't be freaked out by that. So um, he wouldn't. I just hope no one else is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, meh. Um, let's see. Hey, Hal. Any any questions or anything pop up in your week that you wanted to cover? Don't involve burgers. Um. They could involve burgers, Sean. I would not. Uh, let's. It would be allowed. <laughs> not. Not so much, actually. It's. Uh, I uh, been busy doing some other stuff during the week. There was some uh, family stuff that came up, and that kind of took a bunch of time. So. Uh, yeah, very sturdy. But most that I right got now. today was uh, attending the, uh, the uh, collab. Uh, two conference that was uh, the global that was a ball. I enjoyed that. Yep. Well, there's oh, only guess, four more days of that going on. Yeah, I I don't Indeed, even have there a are. link to that. Can someone share it? Because I don't even have a link to that at all. Oh yeah. Uh, well, I mean, it's by the it's the same where we host the stuff. Uh, I, I, in fact, I just I'll I'll share this out. Um, yeah, look at your LinkedIn feed, Neil. It'll be all over the place. I don't yeah. go on LinkedIn. So I, I just, go on LinkedIn like once a month and just accept people, and that's all I do. So I just added from the the, the keynote this morning. I added the picture to the top of Thank that you. blog that blog post. But in there, it's good. the first link. There is the Global Con two link. Thank you. And and, and yeah. I will point out that that's detrimental on me, not on anyone else. <laughs> I am not paying attention. <laughs> uh, Nobody can drink from everything. Mm-hmm. That fire hose yeah. is got an awful wide gauge yeah yeah so there's uh so oh do we have is is rob foster on rob we don't have rob, any really? we don't have foot updates what about his foot yeah you no know, it's been a long say. time so rob if you're still watching you need to provide an update there yeah, like, he, like he needs encouragement oh you're live on facebook right now yeah yeah we are. Teams meeting. okay yeah um, I, owe, I, owe rob, I owe rob i owe rob him i need to send him something in the post Okay. And I've told him about this. Uh, so you know, Rob's a guitar fan, right? Like I'm, I play guitar. Yeah. Christian, clearly looking behind you, you play guitar. Well, I say I play. I dabble. I I, I dabble. I try. I'm, I'm a bass guitarist. Um, but yeah. yeah, I have a I have an acoustic, and a, uh, I just bought a new. Microsoft actually just paid for my latest guitar, really? which is an Ibanez. An Ibanez. It's really nice. It's kind of nice. Yeah, they gave us like a um, morale booster. Go buy something. Mm. So they said, Here's, we'll pay the first $200. Nothing wrong with that. So, yeah. so $200 isn't much, but it's, and I'm not, I'm not complaining, but at the same mm-hmm. time, so, so I was talking to Rob about two or maybe two months ago, and I found something that I, Rob is a huge um, Gibson fan, right? Gibson guitars. Gibson Les Paul. Mm-hmm. And, I found something that I was like, you know what? I can't not buy this for him. There's four posters. They're, they're just A4 size. Like, let, um, yeah, okay. Oh, A4 doesn't mean anything to Americans. Uh, yeah, it does. Of course it does. Yeah, okay. A4. So letter yeah. size, like, a little bit bigger. Um, and it's the history of the Gibson guitar. And there's mm-hmm. all blue, blue, blueprints of how they develop the guitar and what they do Very inside cool. the guitar. So I was like, I gotta buy this, and I'm gonna buy this, and I'm gonna give it to Rob. Very cool. So, if he's still online, he he already knows this is coming. So it's not I'm not revealing anything he doesn't already know, but it's freaking fabulous. It hmm. cost me like twenty bucks. I'm like, what the hell? No, I know That's this okay. guy's a this guy's a fabulous Les Paul fan, and this is like the history of the whole guitar. That's a wonderful because, thought, Neil. That's really cool. Good on yeah. you. That's what you know, I occasionally watch the not to get too sidetracked, but I occasionally watch 
you know, of the kind of maker videos, those types of videos. There's a couple series that I will watch. Like I've watched several of of complete refurbs of classic guitars that were destroyed or or modifying, taking cheaper ones and like building customized where they're, um, you know, they're, they're creating just a completely new veneer and just making these beautiful things and completely tearing it down, taking the neck off, com- repairing it, straightening it, putting out, going through the process, you know, add the new, uh, uh, you know, the, the bars onto it, file everything down, all that entire process. And yeah. I, I'm fascinated by that. I'm not that, you know, I, I, I can't play like enough to appreciate the the work that went into some of those units. But um, yeah, it's just, it's fascinating to look at, uh, to, to watch that process. Of course, I'm also, I love those, uh, there's a this guy that's, I think he's in British Columbia and he um, details vehicles, like the filthiest vehicles in the world. That's another one I'm, fascinated by it's part of my uh, adhd and ocd where the cleaning process that level of detail of cleaning i think just really appeals to me yeah i'm i'm ocd off the scale there's, yeah there's so many things i sit down in the house it was kind of funny so sorry i don't know if we have people want to ask questions here but there's a couple saying, questions but, queued up go ahead you know let's do let, let's talk to our people first yeah we'll, yeah we'll, well there's a uh, so there's a question here. It says, what uh, what do you guys use for multi-factor authentication for VPN? Uh, and then he's got a modifier for that. He's looking for recommendations, but he's on, it says GCC high, high tenant. So um, the the government cloud, the high tenant, I, I, I'm not, I don't know much Microsoft about GCC. I would expect that answer. <laughs> yeah, Neil. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> for me, I'm usually on the consuming end, not the implementing end, and I use whatever the the, the customer does. I use a whole host of different ones, but um, Microsoft Authenticator works great. I'm, fi- I'm fond of yeah. that. Microsoft works great. Octo so works great. The they all work great. They, they, no, without, without just blowing, obviously, com- being Microsoft, I'm going to blow the Microsoft trumpet, but but we all, you know, there's a, there's a ton of stuff. Octa, um, yeah. You know the Microsoft Authenticator, even going down to like custom-based authentication platforms. They, 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 you know, what I would say, let's. What are your requirements? Let's no, don't just say what do you use, but what are your requirements, and then yeah. we'll choose. Then we'll help you choose the right platform, or we'll help you guide you down the right path for for you to make the choice. What a good answer. Yeah, I they, could be a consultant if I want to be. <laughs> I, so I, are there any new ones? It depends. Is, is, <laughs> any, have you worked at all, Neil, with uh, the government cloud? No. So because uh, my, my scenario is obviously I'm a UK citizen. So I've worked in, I've worked in with the government. I was full of security, top secret, cleared in the UK. But that was many years ago. Hmm. Things have moved on a lot since then. And I'm now living in the US, but I don't have any kind of clearance. So no, I can, but I know people that know people, if that makes sense. I can help. Um, but I think finding someone who, um, look, okay, look, I'm going to, th- I'm going to name drop. Do we all, we all know Dan Usher, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So Dan Usher is very, in my opinion, very versed with all the government cloud very versed with that kind of thing. So he would be a great guy to engage, to talk to. And I don't know, I, I have no idea, and I'm just being honest, I have no idea on your personal relationships with him. What I'm saying is Dan, for me, he's right in the sweet spot. Yeah. For, for what you might want for that. And there's a bunch of other people as well. Yeah. So um, I just cc Dan mm-hmm. on the question on Facebook. So... Uh, Dan will see that he'll 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 be online. I'm sure he can follow the flow yeah. and be able to answer that question. Yeah. Or he add, joined us one week. Yeah. Yeah. Good, yeah. He's a good guy. Teddy bear. I've drank way too much whiskey with him. <laughs> and Hal's frozen right now. He's like, oh, maybe his eyes are moving Where a little bit. There he is. No. <laughs> there he is. He's moving. Yeah. <laughs> it's the palsy, Hal. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah, it, 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 single sign-ons are really interesting 
thing, especially when you move to government cloud, it, it becomes like, what can we support? What can't we support? There's a ton of stuff out there that can do it. But the question is, what can we use in our cloud? Yeah. And I know from an Azure standpoint, we're, we're trying to certify everything. But obviously, there's certain things we can't certify, right? We need we have to work. We've got a lot more work to do with the with the vendor to make that work. And your use of the word interesting and classification as such means a whole nother thing to most people. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, things start to get. I'm going to use the word interesting again. Things start to get interesting, <laughs> um, and and it's difficult for me, like I say, because you know I can I've come from a background in the UK. Well, I was I was fully top secret cleared in the UK Ministry of Defence, and I come to the US, but I'm a UK citizen. I don't even have my green card yet, and it's like no, we we can't talk to you anymore. We have to stop talking to you. I'm like, oh, okay, fine, <laughs> that's okay. So, but I, but I know people. So, you know, if if anyone does need to have a conversation around that, he knows you, people. You guys <laughs> may know people. You guys may be certified yourself. But you know, there's a there's a there's a peer in my team who is she's a 16 year military vet. She spent eight years in the Air Force, eight years in the in the Marines. So, eight years in the Marines means she, she's still a Marine. She now works directly, 100 percent facing to me. So if someone needs to have a conversation, I just point them their way, and point point them their way, or her way, and she's freaking awesome. I won't lie. I'd love to get her on this call as a guest. Actually, one one day, she's 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 phenomenal. Cool. Very cool. So I'm looking down through some other other questions. We've got a few. Another single sign on. I just referred over to Dan as well. So another another GCC question. Um, that was similar, but I think no, he's, you know he's going to beat me up. Right? He's going he's to ping me, and I was like, Neil, what the? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Potential right, helps to help. I, it's dark here. I'm going to go turn the light on. Be right back. And I'm looking through the teams now. The the teams, Microsoft Teams group, to see if there's any other questions. Um, somebody was asking uh, about says I cannot record the meeting that I organize. Um, there's no start recording button. They've created a team with multiple channels, uh, and they've set the, the so they've set up a number of private channels. Oh. Um, okay. And when but when he start, starts the meeting on all the channels, he couldn't find the record button, couldn't get in there. Um, and, and there's a, doesn't I'm looking for a response, but um, Rachel says might sound silly, silly, but are you going through the ellipses or expecting a button on the screen? Like, do you do you see? Um, are you able to see the record through the ellipses? Well, my uh, first question would be: Are you actually signed into that tenant and in the right team? Uh, because you can launch into a meeting from pretty much anywhere, and your abilities and what you can yeah. do, such as chat and other things, are going to be constrained by the tenant that you're signed into, as well as the team you're currently right. on. What particular mood that yeah. Teams happens to be in in that one today? I, I, I could be True wrong, but I also think if you if you create the meeting within the channel, if the channel is configured to not allow recording, then you can't right. then, then it's done. Right. right. Yeah. So that there could be. Yeah. Exactly. I don't. I don't know specifically. I don't. I'd have to check. I don't. I don't know. If, I don't. I don't know 100 for sure if that's the right answer. But right. I know. There, I know there's, there there's a number of restrictions. Right, yeah. specifically for private channels, is there a setting of, of allowing or not allowing recording? Because that could be the case. Okay, I'm doing um, my research. I'll dig in. Yeah, because that that might be a uh, that was my first thought was mm -hmm. what policies were set up at the creation of those private channels. And it may have been, you know, just you want those to be secure. If it's if you're allowing the recording, where do those default to? Where do those go? Because that could be a uh, a, a quick, uh, you know, non-secure way of of, uh, uh, of of losing IP by having your recordings all go in the same bucket. True uh, that. Channels and non, non yeah, channels. And they, and, they, and they just end up in stream, right? By default. So. Right. Correct. Um, so we're. Okay. I think. Mm, okay. 
Yeah, I thought about just open up the admin center, see if there's anything that could be one of those. I'm not sure if it's configured um, via PowerShell. There's some other controls that are not in the admin center. Uh, let me see if there's any other questions here. Hmm. Yeah, if you have anybody that's watching the live stream, we've got a handful of people that are on there. Um, if you have any other questions you'd like us to, to try and tackle, um, let's see. Mohanad said, uh, do, 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 there, these, there's a lot on the web and also kind of support. Um, let's see. I don't see anything specific to recording. Yeah. But it wouldn't surprise me though if that was like a thing because if you if you record the meeting it, it ends up in your personal stream yep and therefore it wouldn't not surprise me in the slightest to see that as being a restriction i i don't know for sure though And uh, so we got part of a question, the beginning of a question here. Uh, Wasif is asking that he's got a Windows 2016 server security issue. Um, yeah, it's not. We're, we're we're covering we may whether or not we can answer your question. I guess instead of looking at this screen with no camera, I'll look over here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll we can always try and tackle it. So feel free to uh, type in the details of the problem that you're experiencing, and we'll we'll see if we can help. I'm going to have better I'm luck a with a I'm, Windows server question than a Teams I'm, question. Yeah, yeah, I'm a Windows engineer. Let's, show, let's go for it. Yeah, so. Hey, come on, Christian. Christian, I really have to ask you, what is that thing over your shoulder on Which top of thing? that bookcase behind you? That furry thing? Yeah, what is that? It's like it's a... Che it's Chewbacca. It's Chewy, man. It's Chewbacca. Chewy? Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> I don't want that. No, but now you scared me because I see that thing that's down at the bottom of your bookcase. But yeah, okay. <laughs> Looks like my dog. Yeah. Or Neil what? after a hard night. Mm, what? Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> you guys, I've there. seen you towards the end of some of those nights, Neil. <laughs> so, so, wait. You didn't see me on Saturday this. night. So, so my my in laws were staying at Park City this last weekend, and they saw something. They said, oh. "They said Christian appreciate these things and and how awful they are. It's hilarious." Hang on, I'm gonna I do, love socks. Sit, sit up here. I here we go. So, a pair of so socks. My, 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 Check out these socks. Oh my gosh! Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Oh wait, there's there's a little comb too. You know. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, that I is love Park City. Oh, so my oh. my better my better half, Amy. Um, I think you met her probably at any night a couple of years ago. Um, she she's from Utah, so Park City's been a popular destination for us over the years. Like just drive out there, hang out by the old ski resorts, and just just chill out. It's been pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, yeah think, I, my I, dog's coming to see me. I'm gonna see my dog. Look, yeah. I'm gonna show you my dog. He's down. Can you see him? See the Get top it. of your hand. And now I see a baseball field. Oh, wait, yeah. wait. There he is. He's down there. Wait. <laughs> yeah. I see the top of his head in the, in the neck. And now he's yeah. yeah, cause I've, cause that's because I've got a background on. Yeah, that's right. Gunny, mm. Gunny. You good? See? There we go. Hey. Yep. Uh, All right. No, because I've got a custom background on, so as soon as he moves yeah. out of the field, he like just yeah. Whatever. I was going to yeah. say that you know, so so Sue Hanley and family are out here, I think twice a year at Park City, and so we went up and and spent an afternoon. I, I I've been many times. I I do not understand the allure of Park City. I'm sorry if I'm offending anybody, but it's really incredibly boring. <laughs> and, and I get skiing, 
and you can ski the other side of the same mountains for half the price and it's still ski oh, wow. snow so <laughs> um i don't understand the allure now there's places like just south of park city heber city and midway like i would love to live there it is gorgeous well heber is where my other, other half's from that's it that okay. was a, that's her hometown yeah it's i love it out there in the the this summer the the fly fishing is just incredible and of course you've got the reservoir and we're actually going to go in a couple of weeks here we've got uh rented um jet skis and going to be doing a big uh, family outing on on the lake so sounds nice but, uh, but anyway cool. yeah but there's some some beautiful parts around here i love it i've only been out there twice and the the whole like sitting in the valley watching like just when you sit down in the valley and you look at the wasatch mountains and it's like is there anywhere more beautiful in the world than this i just want to sit and just enjoy it like with a beer yeah. <laughs> i'm like i mean i'm good so i've got a few handful of places that i think are more beautiful uh, I, I'm partial to New Zealand. I have, I have one or two, and also Iceland. Well, but I, I, I've been to both. I love both. I think, yeah. If I was to choose the most beautiful place in the world I've ever been, it's probably weird. This is going to sound really weird, but one of the most beautiful places I've ever been in the world is Libya, hmm. North North Africa, Libya. Hmm. I was fortunate enough to go there on a Microsoft engagement about 12 years ago. And the people were fabulous. It was before all of the real troubles kicked off. Mm. Right. Mm. Oh, well, like, like, the people were beautiful. The, rubble. Right. The people were amazing. The, 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 it, okay. Lots of desert. There's a lot of desert, but it was still also really, I think sometimes when we look at, at what we know, and what we like, yes, I've been to New Zealand, and Christian, you're absolutely right. Christian, uh, New Zealand is so beautiful. Iceland, so beautiful. Helsinki, Alaska, right? I've, I've been to 48 of the, no, no, 46 of the 50 states. Mm. More than most Americans have, and I'm, yeah. <laughs> and I'm new here. But yeah. when I think about little things that just trigger me to be, that was a fabulous experience. That was a fabulous, like, I love that. Libya, the people, are just, the people in Libya are just out of this world. So, so accommodating, so happy. Maybe not these days because of all the stuff that's gone on. But back then, loved it. Absolutely loved it. And they make a fabulous hummus and goat meat <laughs> food out of <laughs> out of this world amazing <laughs> anyway I'll, I'll i'll show up now yeah no it's a it, I, I i love it so i'm actually a big fan of the well look i live in high desert but uh, i would describe to people i mean the mountains here are incredible well um i've driven between i was born and raised in northern california and vacationed as a kid growing up and did the road trips before the freeways were finished we were forced to stop in every town and, and, you know, where we didn't have, uh, you know, a CD player. We didn't, you know, back in the, the late seventies, you'd lose the radio station and slowly go to static and you're oh, like, Oh stuff. no, it's family singing show tunes or I nap again, kind of options. Uh -huh. uh, and when there's a bunch of kids in the back of the station wagon, wonderful. Now my kids are like, yeah, let's go do a road trip for two days. We don't care because they're looking at their whatever device the entire time. So, mm -hmm. uh, And Spotify, like my trip in between Washington State and Salt Lake City, there are only two mountain passes where I lose my connectivity and my Spotify playlist pauses for a few minutes. So inconvenient. Those <laughs> yeah. pauses. Well, you can download it, right? So you have it all. Of, of course. I, that's besides the <laughs> point. I want the I new, the fresh. I don't want an old, stale, downloaded version. What if music changes? <laughs> Hashtag first world problems. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, let's see. Uh, Any more questions? Have, uh, yeah, about 20, 20 minutes left. So uh, let's see. Um, 
a little more, eh, not really more information around that. Uh, um, yeah, um, Mahanad, I would say, again, talk talk with Dan. He's going to be able to answer your questions there um, about the MFA questions. Uh, because when you start talking about the specifics around GCC, I mean, I, I, I don't know. We don't have anybody that works within the government cloud uh, yeah. that's all I can. I, 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 so ultimately, the intent from that perspective is all features that are available in public cloud should ultimately eventually be available in GCC. The question is the timeline's a little different. Things like things like like single sign-on though and multi-factor off, they should have been taken care of a long time. Shouldn't be that hard. So so I'd I'd go down that path. Um, Christian, you're right. Top Dan Dan would be a great resource. No question. Yeah. But yeah, it seems definitely. that MFA is something we should have taken care of a long time ago. Um, looking to see any other questions. Um, yeah, there's there's actually a question was earlier today. Um, somebody asked in the Teams group asked. Um, so that's not confusing at all to refer to something in the Teams group. On Facebook, yeah, I know, I know. We made a joke about you know it happens. Uh, the naming of products this morning. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, upload a files in a chat. If I upload a file within a chat in Teams, it doesn't show under files, just in chat. And I can't see any files from others as well. And and so the 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 answer back. Um, and I think there's we can talk a little bit about this. Some of the the nuances, the difference that the chat capability in Microsoft Teams. If you upload files, any content that's that's added into Teams actually goes into your OneDrive. So it's a one-on-one. -on -one. If if we've got a chat and it's the four of us, then it's going to create a shared file in our OneDrives. Um, the chat history will be in you know in those OneDrives. So that's that's where it's it, uh, everything is stored. It's it's that personal view. Uh, the so there is some confusion about it. I actually just shared in the productivity tips for this last month the fact that uh, you know I, like I didn't realize the if you create tabs within a chat so you can actually go and do everything that you do in a channel in that chat if we have an ongoing in fact we can create a chat for these sessions and all the chat history within that chat would be stored in OneDrive. We can create tabs. We can upload content that are specific to like these events. All of that will be stored in OneDrive. So it's a personal view into all of that history. So it's just, it's another level of how you can organize your collaborations within Teams. You can create, so you have tenants that you have access to you have uh, whether you're a full member or a guest access you have teams that are created channels that are created and then you have the channel or the the chats so four different levels of organization uh of chat collaboration or of uh teams collaborations yeah and i and, and I, I i i don't think obviously working for microsoft i want i i feel perfectly happy critiquing our way we implement things i don't think i don't think that the the chat level making it a OneDrive, what's effectively a OneDrive share right that's that's basically what it is i don't think it's the wrong choice but i think we don't do a great job of messaging that that's how it works i think we could be better at that Right. So when someone says, I'm going to you know, upload a file. OK, cool. By the way, this is where it's going to be. I think we 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 it's documented. Right. It's all out there on, on docs.microsoft.com. But I feel sometimes. We, we could do a better job of, of messaging that. You, you remember that that original diagram that was shared of Microsoft Teams, which is essentially it explains how it's. Uh, it was architected on top, you know, uh, on top of uh, SharePoint and Exchange, mm -hmm. and so and, and it kind of breaks that down. That uh, to that point, Neil, like that should have been included within the di that diagram. The chat to to OneDrive should have been part of that. 
Uh, I yep. think that would have made it really clear. So it's almost like it's this additive. Well, why did that change? You know, it's like, yeah. well, well this, I, I don't, I don't, so I don't really think it changed. I think it, we just didn't communicate it. Right. No, that's my point. You know, people now, if you went and changed that, they think it was a new thing, but that's the way that it's worked. Yeah. But now it looks like a new thing. And then right. you get people jumping on it saying, oh, so yeah, not, not the best, not the best message. And maybe we should talk to someone like, mate, you know what? Christian, this would be awesome if you could like. Let's see if we can invite. And this, you might want to do. You might not want to do this, but if we could invite, what well, I guess speaker from the teams team. Yeah. Hey, if they're interested, I I've invited a few from time to time. Like Caru, Caru, Caruana, Caruana, and Caruana, and, and, and Lori Potmeyer as well. I've been invited so. Yeah. It would be cool, and I know I've obviously I've, I think this is like my fourth of maybe fourteenth time on this call. It would be pretty cool to get someone to come in and do like a fifteen minute. Here's why we made the choices we made, not to throw them under a bus, right? That's absolutely not the wrong the wrong. That's absolutely not the objective, but to get the vision. Yeah. Why choices were made the way they were made, and what's next? Yeah. Yeah, kind of the counterpoint to that, in all fairness, I think a lot of people oftentimes have an interest in understanding the details, mm -hmm. but they don't particularly stick the details. The details don't stick for those people. And it requires a certain level of baseline knowledge that not a lot of people who are users tend to have mm -hmm. about the services and their implementation. No, you're right. But I would say one of the question is, who many... Who on this call, who's joining this call, who listens to this call, is a user versus someone who cares about the service, someone who's interested in implementation, who's interested in managing it for their business? That's a good question. I think we're all we're all at a level where we're don't don't just give me something. I want to know how it works. Right. So I think the people that are likely to respond to this. Are, are those people not the oh i'm an end user all right save word save powerpoint save those aren't the people we're talking to and that does and that's i'm not trying to be disrespectful for them just or to them you know they're at the end of the day they're the people that that are using our services whether it's through microsoft whether it's through a partner whatever it may be and that's a great thing don't get me wrong I think, but if 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 us, you know, we've all been around the block a few times, let's face it, right? We're all 10, 20, 30 years invested in technology. For us, do we really need to know how it works? Well, these days, maybe not. But do we want to? You, I know, and Hal, I'm going to apologize here because I don't know you that well, but I've learned you a little bit about you over the last few weeks. Sean and, and Christian, I know you exceptionally well. I, I feel that way. I know you, you, you're, you're the people that will say, don't just give me something without helping me know how it works. I really want to know how it works. Yeah. And I think we have that situation. Right. So when it comes to, when it comes to OneDrive, and it's like, Oh, we're going to share a file in Teams. When someone says that to me, I'm like, hang on a minute. What does that really mean? What are the so I think that there's a split, there's a split level. Right? There's, a, there's a level of deep technical people that really want to know how it works, even if they can't change it, versus end users. And and that's not dis I'm not being disrespectful to the end users. Right. But they should just 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 use it. We're also end users, but we're also, how does it work? I want to know. Show me how it works. Yeah. I would be interested in a, a survey. How does it work one way, one way at a time, and a different way the next time? That's another good question. <laughs> <laughs> that is also a really good question, Hal. Yes. Have you ever tried to do a survey? Yeah. Why do you change it? <laughs> survey of the uh, watcher base or the user base on the Facebook group? Because hmm? I've interacted, I know... Most of the people I've answered questions for who I've had secondary conversations after the fact and through email and whatnot, they tend to be 
right at the you know the far left side of that bell curve of distribution they tend to be people asking very basic questions who do not line up with the demographic that Neil's talking to and I agree with what Neil's saying that most of the people probably tuning into this podcast are going to be people who are interested more so in the implementation of the service just because it makes them better able to give advice and to utilize the service right. um, but there are plenty of people I know I've spoken to who have posted questions purely in the Facebook group alone who don't fit that demographic. Right. They're trying to solve a problem to move forward and get their work done and then go back and not have another question until the next time something breaks or the behavior is not what they expect. Right. Right. So yeah. I wonder what that that's distribution great, that's, is. That's yeah. a great point, Sean. I think, you know, we have to understand, I think, for some of us, as you know, obviously you know me. I'm 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 about as technical as it got, as it gets, right? I'm pretty deep into everything, in the weeds. I want to know. I want to understand everything. I want to know everything. But at the end of the day, I'm also an end user. So I want to be sure that the way I use PowerPoint, the way I use Office apps, the way I use Office 365, the way I use Azure, and other services, whether it's Google, whether it's AWS, because I use all those too, right? I, I, I'm going to be honest. I drive my own domain system off AWS, right? Just because, because Route 53 is freaking amazing. <laughs> just to, just to be clear about that. Um, but I want to say that you know, from a perspective of a end user who doesn't need to be deeply technical, sometimes they just need to understand why did that change. Why is that now behaving this way versus that way? What what do you do? And I think giving them giving the end user a little bit more awareness of the roadmap of what's coming down the line, what's happening, what's changing, what's moving, what what, what are we doing? I think that that helps that conversation. Well, you know, this that's actually you can, you've kind of struck on what was one of the drivers for doing these AMA style uh, uh, discussions. And and part of, you know, certainly we want to help people solve their, their technical problems because a lot of these questions, I mean, we have seen a number of them. We see them again and again. There's patterns to the way you've done this. And, and to kind of go backwards and answer the question, Sean, like have I surveyed? Well, you know of the research I've done in the three and a half years, almost three and a half years that Collab Talk, when I formed this, I've done about a dozen different research projects, and almost every single one of those has had surveys where we've collected some of this information, which uh, uh, to, to to understand kind of what are the problem areas that people are experiencing. Now it's been granted most of that research has been more towards geared around topics for the IT pro and developer than the end user, um, security, migration, kind of you know all those kinds of topics. Um, however, what falls out of them, you usually, again, can, you can see the patterns. You start to see the same questions crop up. You do these kinds of sessions. I was talking with the publisher last week. I uh, said, do you have ideas for, for articles of like the, the, your, you've got kind of your finger on the pulse of what's happening in the community? And I, I said, if you go look at any one of this, here we are on episode 13, you go look at the recordings and the document, what's documented of all the of the other twelve, you see from those there's like a dozen questions that are asked in each one of those, and sometimes it's the same one. I attention, I know we've answered it before, but let's answer it again. It's easier for us, you know, and we can point people to that. But I but I pointed, I t said to this publisher, I said you could go read those, and it's an outline of questions real people are asking about the technology. And sometimes we have partial answers. Sometimes we have non-answers. Sometimes we hand things off to Dan Usher. Um, do we do what we get out his home address? Do you need me to look that up? <laughs> you uh, go for it. I love it. <laughs> um, but it's uh, but you're exactly right. It, it, and so it, it's. Uh, I mean, I'd love to do um, you know a, a, another survey. I know. Hey, speaking of the Office 365 community, the Collab 365 guys, they do mm -hmm. surveys every once in a while it's like yeah. what what do you want to know about what topics are being covered and 
And that's actually, you could actually go in, we could have a, probably a great discussion. We could pull in Mark and Fraser and Helen and ask them, it's like, hey, what are the topics which are most searched on a site like Collab365? And that'll give us a great indicator of where people are, 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 are have questions and have issues. I always look at that kind of stuff through the lens of, uh, you know, as a content creator, as you know, I've worked with, with ISVs, I'd always look at that kind of data and say, if people keep asking questions about it, either one, our product is not working the way it sh should, you know, or, or two, we've not properly documented or disseminated information that we have documented around that. So we're failing in one of those areas where we either don't have the right features for what people are doing, uh, or, or we don't have it properly documented to correct them because we do have the right features and they don't, they're not using the product correctly, or it's, they can't find out how to do that with our, with our things. And, and so I, I look at this as, uh, it's great to be able to help and share the knowledge. I'm also learning a ton about stuff, you know, and, and in, in some ways it's a great opportunity to, just as you described, Neil, to, to kind of dig in deeper, to, to understand behind it, because Usually, it's it's not just the question that's being asked; it's the ancillary, uh, uh, you know, impacts of the, those questions. If something is failing, then then how is the compliance and security around that thing that's failing working? Um, What's the holistic context? Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, and 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 obviously the focus here is on M three sixty five collab three sixty five. From my perspective, I've moved into the Azure space now, right? For after 20 years, I moved out of the whole SharePoint Office 365 space. But, but you just can't let go. That's why you're I here. Can't, but I can't let it go. No, <laughs> I, can't, can't let I can't. Go yeah. I, I can't let it go. But yeah. I would say from, from our side, one of the things in the Azure space that I think is also applicable to the O365, M365 space is the most important thing as an engineer in that space is feedback. Tell me what doesn't work. Tell me what doesn't work the way you want it to work. Show me if, if it's just a, you know what? I'd re I'd rather this button not be at the top right, but at the top left, right? It's like the whole site settings button in SharePoint, right? Remember that? Remember that old oh joke? God. Left, right, left, right, left, right. Yeah. It's that kind of scenario. Tell, tell us feedback, 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 feedback. It's so important and so critical because without, without feedback, <coughs> contextual or otherwise, but hopefully, bless you, Hal, mostly contextual, Thanks. we need to understand what is it about the products that either, hey, you know what, this just doesn't work, or this irritates the hell out of me, or I like this, but it's, can you move it somewhere else? Like simple feedback, like basic feedback. The feedback, especially in the, where I am now, I think I'm going to, I'm going to, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to advertise myself. In, in the Azure Fast Track team, we are huge on product feedback. And, the Azure Fast Track team sit directly inside engineering, so I would I would I would I would say to anybody out there who who listens to this recording, if you have a a, a, a scenario inside Azure that doesn't work well for you right now, come talk to me. Come talk to me, and I'll fix it. Okay. I'm bigging myself up. I'm 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 playing the party game, but from a from a whole overall, right? Azure Office 365. Just understand that the the product groups are listening. They're listening more today than they ever have in the past. So. Just. Don't don't be non-vocal. Talk. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm for, done. For I'm, I've, I've, said my, I've said my piece. <laughs> That's right. And we're, and we're at the top of the era. No, I appreciate that. And it's, uh, I think that also comes up on almost every single call too, where we, we say kind of a version of the same thing. And we say like, you, you need, you, you can't just sit there and complain about something not working as expected. 
you need to share your feedback with Microsoft. Uh, go and log something in user voice, which of course, logging something in user voice, you start by searching to see if there's already something there, if your problem's already been defined, if your request, your requirement, um, go out there and, and put it out there. And if it already exists, then, then vote for it. Um, make your presence okay. known, um, upvote, um, go in, and if it if it doesn't exist in user voice, add a, an item to user voice and then share it with the community. Go write a blog post about it, push it out there, push it out through social channels, tag get me. people to go and tag vote me. in. Right. Tag people tag, on tag me. Yeah. I'll fix it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's because Microsoft Maybe. if there's, there's five to ten responses <laughs> on is on a user voice. Uh, ticket, you know, upvotes on that, then Microsoft will respond. They'll go and review that. And, and they'll be able to identify and very fairly quickly if it's something that's on the roadmap and maybe buried somewhere and, and it, you just didn't find it and be able to say, hey, this is something that we're aware of. They may come back and you may not like the answer. They may come back and say, you know, this is something, yeah, we understand this. It's not a scenario that we're planning to support anytime soon or or ever. And here's why. Um, Microsoft has gotten much better at responding to that where they've said when you go through the proper channel, like user voice, uh, and, and then have a discussion and reach out to the product people who, who basically it's, it's on their commitments to participate in the community activities and respond. Almost everybody that owns an aspect of a product or a feature is on the tech community site, writing about it, sharing information there. And so reach out, connect with them directly, the owners of the product or the features that you're that you're struggling with and ask questions there. They will respond. Yeah, and, and as a Microsoft employee, One other thing. I will absolutely 100% validate everything Christian just said. We we are very in tune with the, the user voice. I know sometimes it's easy to say, oh, just, just post it to user voice. I just posted to you, voice. It sometimes feels like it's like a a catch-all, yeah. but we are very. I I won't lie. We're very, very in tune with that. Yeah. There's no question from both the Office 365, M365, and Azure perspective. You, you do, I, I get email. I get like a 50 emails a day of people posting or plus warning things. And we are very, very in tune with it. I promise you. Yeah. Yep. Oh, hey, well, before we go, T-shirt yeah. time. Oh, yeah, that's right. Sorry. Hal has something to say. T-shirt, knock, knock. My T-shirt's boring. T-shirt. I'm, all, I'm, all, I'm just all gray. Yeah, wow. Well, nice. I'm just, and you've I'm, got I'm, your Ignite T-shirt. I can, yeah. I can do my tattoo. There you go. <laughs> Now, now we have to PG thirteen this thing, Neil. Come on. <laughs> Jeez, it's a family channel, man. <laughs> hey, it, it's just my Gemini plus a cancer combined. That's okay. There's nothing. There's nothing over the top. Yeah. Well, no worries. Well, well thank you, gentlemen, for uh, for joining. I'll have to uh, uh, blur screen or black out that last part. <laughs> But otherwise, um, just um, I just I just don't think that Disney will endorse us otherwise if we're, you know, but anyway, yeah, they, they're buying everybody. I just don't want to I, I don't want to sour that deal. But yeah, there you go. You got it. You got to wear that. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Well, thanks a lot, everybody. Thanks for, for watching. Of course, uh, so I'll have this thing. Uh, I'm going to try and upload this since it's just the one hour. I'm going to try and get this up and live this evening. Um because I've got nothing else going on, really. Sleep, eh. <laughs> eh. yeah. But uh, later. yeah, so be able, be able to find the recording. It'll be on YouTube uh, this evening. But I've got if you go to BuckleyPlanet.com, you'll be able to find so episode thirteen. I'll post it, and as I do every time, I'll outline all the topics that we cover during this hour with links over to the video. So if you only care about something that happened at the fifty-seven minute mark, you don't have to watch through the rest of it to be able to find the content. You can yeah. jump right to it. So, and you know he's referencing Neil's little uh, my tattoo, yeah, attire. Uh, <laughs> no, but there. so we will be back again next Monday. So we're going to be at eight a.m. and six p.m. Pacific both times. And Neil, if you're going to join us next Monday, you're going to do your you're going to talk about your services. I will. 
You want, yeah. to, do, you want to do an Azure fast track show? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, well, at least I can, I can, I can do 10, 15 minutes. That's all it takes. Yeah. So we're, let's put you on at the beginning of that. So uh, come in and join us and we'll queue up other questions for following that. But uh, yeah, come talk about Azure Fast Track. And right. we'll see everybody next Monday. Gotcha. Good night, guys. Sounds like Thank you. Bye. Bye.